Okay, and here is part two of my interview on Superman, and I think where I left off, I was talking about Zod coming to Earth. Yes. So Zod comes to Earth um, to destroy Superman and try to reform Krypton on our planet. And uh, he's using this uh, thing called a world engine, to, which creates this huge magnetic pulse through the center of the Earth, which um, totally changes the Earth's atmosphere and environment to suit Kryptonians. But by doing that, he's going to virtually wipe out the human race, like 7 billion people or whatever. So Superman, of course, has to stop him. And um, one big criticism I heard about this movie is that... Like, the first half is very drama, you know, it's very uh, much like a slower paced kind of drama, but then when you get into the second part, suddenly all hell breaks loose, and it becomes this huge action, like non-stop action movie, and I mean like non-stop, it's like an hour of hardcore action, you know, great big huge battle scenes with Superman battling all these Kryptonians, and um, it crescendos with this great big huge epic battle at the end between Zod and Superman, which is um, very much inspired by the battle between Neo and uh, Agent Smith in The Matrix, but uh, on a much more epic scale, I would say. Um, it's crazy because they're, they're Kryptonians, so they're thousands of times stronger than human beings. So they're basically throwing each other through buildings and demolishing everything in sight as they have this big battle, you know. And a lot of people didn't like the, they thought it went on too long, the battle scene, that it was just non-stop action, there wasn't enough time to breathe or to really focus or, you know, and that it was kind of inconsistent, like the tone wasn't consistent in the film. I suppose it wasn't, but I still really liked the battle scene at the end, it was so epic and amazing. And um, yeah, I did borrow a bit from The Matrix Part 3, but the fact is, these are Kryptonians. They're these like super advanced beings, so of course when they fight, it's going to demolish everything, right? So, I don't know. And uh, the other criticism I heard is that when they're fighting, so many people die, and when Zod activates this world engine, thousands and thousands, maybe even millions of people die, because it keeps sending out this pulse, and the whole city, it, it, like, it slowly spreads out and more and more of the city is getting demolished, you know, by this world engine. Um, but the thing people aren't remembering really, or thinking about, I guess, is the fact that Superman saved about 7 billion people. Because <laughs> if this world engine had continued, uh, it would have killed every living thing on our planet, basically. So, Yes, a lot of people die in this, but it's very realistic. I mean, if two super beings are fighting each other on our planet, um, and a lot of people are like, well, why couldn't Zod take him up into outer space and fight him up there or whatever, but, um, uh, of course Zod's going to want to kill as many people as possible. It's Zod. He cares nothing for human life at all. He, um, he's totally ruthless, and his only sole purpose is to protect you know, the Kryptonians, and he cares nothing for the human race. He has no morality at all, so. Uh, and what can Superman do? He has to defeat him, and he has to destroy this world engine, or the whole fucking planet would be destroyed. Sorry for swearing, but, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, there is a high death toll in this, but I think it's very realistic. You know, that's what would happen if some super advanced race came to our planet and tried to destroy us, you know. And uh, the fact is Superman is only one man, you know, and he's fighting other Kryptonians, which, and their sole purpose is to be militant. They are super strong, super powerful, they have advanced weaponry and uh, everything. And Superman's just one man, right, fighting these Kryptonians. Um, so he's, um... <laughs> He has his work cut out for him, basically, in this movie. Um, I thought overall the film was excellent. It did borrow a lot from other, you know, sci-fi and uh, action films I've seen. But um, I thought at the same time it was quite unique, too. Um, it was very realistic, very gritty. Uh, you know, it wasn't silly like in Superman Returns. Like, he puts on a pair of glasses. When he becomes Clark Kent, and suddenly that's his dis only disguise, right? When he's Superman, he doesn't have a hood on or a mask or anything, right? Everyone can see his face. 
but suddenly he just puts on a pair of glasses, just like this, and bam, no one recognizes him. Which I always found a little silly, and it's not the case in this movie. It's much more realistic. Of course, Lois recognizes him right away at the end when he puts on the glasses as Clark Kent. So, <laughs> um, so I liked the fact that it was more realistic and more grounded. Um, the technology was very believable in the film, especially on Krypton. Um, if you look at the comics, all the all the parts that are on Krypton. Um, it actually pays homage to a lot of those designs, uh, but totally updated, so it looks really modern. And uh, their technologies are all based around kind of nanotechnology and um, kind of manipulating metal and stuff like that. And um, it's really cool, the technology. I think it looks very believable and realistic and very much what our future technology might look like, um, you know, with nano computers and bio-organic kind of computers and all that. So. Um, yeah, overall it's a great movie. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's a perfect movie, it does have its flaws, uh, but I think it's a hugely entertaining film and I thought it was very moving, especially all the stuff with um, Clark Kent discovering who he is as Superman and um, also his relationship with his real father and his, you know, his mother, you know and how sad that is that they have to give him up and send him to this other world because their world is going to be destroyed. Um, I found all that very moving, uh, really great performances, a very intense villain, General Zod, a uh, fantastic villain. Um, it was very perilous, and lots of danger and lots of death, but uh, very realistic, you know. Um, you know, it's not sugar-coated in any way, it's not campy, or ridiculous. Um, at least I didn't think so. Um, you know, I'm not sure why so many people didn't like this film. Uh, I think the biggest issue they had is they thought it borrowed too heavily from other films and it didn't have a consistent tone and uh, all the people that died, but uh, well, I guess it didn't have a consistent tone, but I still really liked it. And uh, as epic and huge and exhausting as the action was, it was still really cool too. I mean, all the action scenes are incredible in it, so. It had some humor in it, not much, but a little. Um, and the one, the one biggest criticism I, I would say I have with this is at the end, after okay, spoiler alert, but after he takes out Zod, um, all these people have died, and the whole city is demolished, and you know even Smallville gets taken out in it and stuff, and then by the end, um, it's. Uh, it just kind of ends. Um, there's not really a moment, like a dramatic moment, to kind of honor all the people that died in the film. It just kind of jumps into the next scene, which is really kind of funny and stuff. So I didn't feel like there was enough of a pause between that moment where he kills Zod and then the moment at the end. There wasn't enough of a kind of dramatic pause or moment where um, it kind of contemplates everything that happened and all the people that died to save our world, basically, like all the people that die and, you know, suddenly all forgotten in the next scene. So that's one big criticism I had with it. But um, other than that, and a few minor flaws, um, it was an excellent movie. So that's my review on Superman, Man of Steel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to be doing a review probably on Thor The Dark World next. So look forward to that. Have a good night. Bye-bye.